Welcome back to, well, episode one of my Old School Essentials solo play. If you watched episode zero zero, I discussed my plans going forward for the solo play. I talked about the books that we would be using. And at the very end, I rolled up some stat blocks and they actually turned out quite nicely. I have three sets here. Um, and we, we looked at how in Old School Essentials, the dice that you roll, you add them in down the line. So that will dictate what what class you're going to play, essentially. This is a 13. Um, and we have a really awesome stat line here. For the first roll, we had a high wisdom. So that's going to lend us to playing a cleric. Uh, because we, we want to get as high of a, an ability modifier as we can for our prime requisite, requisite in this system. Uh, that'll grant us bonus experience points. And so we're trying to get their prime requisite for a cleric, that's wisdom, as high as we can. We want to get that bonus XP. We want to get to the next level as quickly as possible um, so we can get more hit points and more spells. Um, for our second set, we have like a really awesome set, except for the Constitution, which sadly was only a five. Uh, but it, we have a high strength and a very high intelligence. Um, everything else is kind of fair to Midland, except for the Charisma, so that's that's going to give a nice bonus to like NPC interactions and also being able to bring extra retainers to thicken up the party a bit. Uh, so I'm thinking an elf here. So we're going to have a cleric, an elf. I did get some feedback that uh, you really can't see the pencil in this lighting. Sorry, guys, this is a pencil and paper kind of game and I'm going to have to erase a lot. So um, yeah, sorry about that. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to work around that issue yet. Um, and then for our last stat block, well, uh, we had a really high strength. And everything else pretty much average except for Wisdom. This guy is not the wisest person in the room. So we're going to make a fighter here. All right, so my plan for this episode, we're not going to be able to get to, into any adventuring today because we need to kit out the boys. We need to get these guys geared up and ready to go. Hopefully we can roll high on our gold so that way we can afford some extra minute arms, some retainers to come and support us on the adventure. Um, and also, we want to we want to roll really high for our hit points. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that. Um, in this game, whatever you roll, that's what you get. Um, but there, even if you have a negative modifier in like in our else situation here, no matter what, you're guaranteed at least one hit point, okay? So there's never gonna be a time where you have negative hit points, you die upon creation, and then, you know, you're just done. So um, let's go ahead and go to the player's handbook, uh, because this has all of the information we need on how to make a character, and I'm gonna go through this process. I'm gonna try to move quickly. Um, I, I will make a special video just for how to make a character, how to roll up a character. But since the focus of, of this playthrough is is actually on the solo play itself, um, I'm going to try to breeze through it pretty quickly. And then I'll make a dedicated video to character creation later. So we're going to pop open the book. Oh, right to the right page. Correct right away. Um, let's see here. <clears throat> so the, the first thing we have is rollability scores. Well, we did that last episode. Hopefully you guys can go back and watch that if you missed it. Uh, then we have choose class. Hey, guess what? We did that as well. We're good to go. Uh, adjust ability scores, step three. Now this is something we are going to do. So it says here that you can increase your character's prime requisite by one point if you reduce either their strength or their wisdom score by two. Now you can't do that with dex, con, and charisma. You can't adjust there, but... For our cleric, his highest stat, so we have a 10, we have a 6, we have a 15, 11, 13, which I'm very happy about, and then a 14 for his charisma. Now I'm going to darken these up just so you guys can maybe see them, because I, I do want you guys to be able to know what's happening <laughs> on the paper here. Now, as you can see... The intelligence, well, that's way too low. I can't go anything lower than a nine. It has to be minimum of nine. So whenever I reduce by two, it can never drop by nine. And as you can see, with the strength of 10, 
I can't reduce that by two and keep it above nine either. So no adjustments here. Sad to say, not gonna happen. So now we're gonna look at the ability score modifiers across the board. Well, let's turn to that page. I do like to tab things here. As you can see, I've tabbed everything. So my strength uh, with a 10, he doesn't have a bonus to his melee. So we're gonna put a plus zero here. And then we're gonna take notice of across the board, stuck doors are open two out of six. So I just put a little fraction here, two over six. Intelligence, let's go down to intelligence. I have a six. I, I, I can, I'm basic on literacy and I can speak the native tongue. So I, I'm just gonna write basic here. He's nothing special. He, he doesn't have any advanced languages. All he needs is the language of his Lord. Wisdom though, ah, 15. So that's gonna be a plus one modifier. Let's take a look over here. 15 plus one to magic saves. Now, something you might notice is that there's, there's no like spell casting bonus that I get for my wisdom. All I get is on my saving throws, an extra plus one against anything that's magical. Dex is 11. So none, none, none. There's no initiative bonus, no AC bonus. We're just gonna do plus zero. So when he's shooting in, in with his melee, he can only do slings with stones anyway. He's gonna have a plus zero to that. His con is a plus one though. Oh, I love that. So even if I roll bad, he's gonna have a little bit more of a cushion, plus one HP, very cool. And charisma, with a charisma of 14, we can see that uh, he gets a plus one to his reactions. And he can have five retainers at one time. Wow, this guy is stacked. And their loyalty to him is at eight. So I'm just going to put an at symbol and then an eight. So I've kind of clustered up my, my space here, but, that, but that's all right. Okay, um, next up, let's see. We're going to go back just a little bit to page 16. All right. Okay, so... We adjust the ability scores. We noted the modifiers, attack values. So we're gonna use ascending armor class in this system. I, it's it's the optional rule, ascending AC. I prefer it. Uh, it I just like to see big numbers. I want to see big ACs. I want to see an AC of of twenty one. You know. Um, note your saving throws and class abilities. So to do that, we got to turn to the cleric page. Okay. So let's take a look. Now, the clerics are not very exciting early on. Um, at level one, they have a D6 hit points. We'll get to that in a second. They have a plus zero to their attack bonus. So we're just going to put a plus zero here. Okay. Their saving throws cross the line. Their death and poison saving throw is 11. Now, you want to roll high for the saving throws. 12 for wands. Okay. Not great, man. Not great at all. Paralysis, 14. I got to roll really high to not get turned to stone. Breath weapon. Oh, so, okay, if a dragon breathes on me, if I don't roll a 16, I'm not taking half damage. I'm taking full. And then again, spells, rods, and staves. I need to get a 15. Now, some of these saving throws will be magical in nature. And since my wisdom is so high, I will get a bonus of plus one to my d20 roll. But we'll get to that later. If it comes up, hopefully it doesn't. If you make a saving throw in this system, it's not good. You might lose your character instantly. Okay, I am a level one with zero XP. My alignment, I am a lawful bro, okay? All my bros are going to be lawful. Lawful elite. Okay, none of, this, none of this amoral nonsense, okay? Our boys are serving the one true God. Um, okay, so we've got uh, that. Let's see. Uh, so coming over, they can use lots of armor and shields. So when we roll for our gold, we're going to buy the best gear possible. We want to keep this guy alive, which means we need to have a high armor class. In combat, though, he's, he's limited to blunt weapons, so he's going to use a mace. 
divine magic doesn't come until level two. So as you can see over here, he has zero spells at level one, but around level two, I will need to get a, um, a religious symbol, a holy symbol, maybe a, a cross for the one true God. Um, but he does have turn undead. So I'm gonna write that here, special ability, turn undead. I'm just gonna put big T U here. Um, other than that, he can't do much until level two when he gets a spell. So let's let's roll some gold and let's get some gear for this boy, okay? This guy needs to be kitted, okay? He needs some serious mileage. He's got to get through a lot of dungeon before he levels up. He needs a total of 1,500 gold pieces, but just a little bit less than that because his wisdom is 15. So guess what that means? Coming over here, if we look at the prime requisite chart, he gets a bonus of 5% on any XP he gets. So he's going to get there a little bit faster, but he just missed that 10% that range by one point. Sad to say. Uh, okay, well, can't really do much about it. You take what you can get, you know. Um, all right, so we wrote down our saving throws. Now the exciting part. We're going to roll hit points. We just chose the alignment, okay? We're gonna buy some gear. Oh, this is this is the best part. Okay. Let's roll some hit points. Okay. We're gonna take out the magic dice box. The blessed dice box. We're gonna use the purple die here for this one. I roll a d6 and then I add one to it. Rolling hit points in old school essentials can be amazing. Four. Okay, so four plus one. My boy has five hit points to start his adventure, his adventuring life. So most monsters, they're going to be rolling a d6 early on. And so there is, there's a good chance that he could get one shot on a five or a six. But, you know, that the, that's the, the price you got to pay to serve the Lord. You got to bring light into the darkest of places. Okay, uh, so next up we're gonna we're gonna roll some gold. That's three d six times ten. We want to roll high here. Any extra gold that we have, we're going to put that towards retainers. Okay, we need to hire some men at arms, some 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 human fighters to come along with us and and uh, soak up some blows and maybe kill some monsters. So here we go. Wish us luck. Bless us, Lord. Here we go. Okay, that's that's pretty standard. Usually it's around 10, but hey, here, you know, we have 11. So 11 times 10, that's 110 gold pieces. That's going to help us buy some gear. Now, when I'm buying my gear for this boy, I do not need at level one to buy a religious symbol. I do not need a holy symbol because I only need that to cast spells with. To turn undead does not require it. So Let's look over at the gear. Again, I've tabbed everything out, ready to rock. Uh, we've got some standard adventuring equipment here. My guy, he needs a backpack. He needs a way to carry all of his treasure. So we're gonna put backpack, uh, how about one large sack? Yeah, hey <laughs> yo. Two small sacks, hey, come on. Come on, guys. We're a we're a family-friendly channel here. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, he needs a up. Oh, he needs some rope. Yeah, gonna get some rope. D six of torches. So we'll just get six torches, and I'll add all of it, all of this up, and you guys can check the numbers later for verifying. He's gonna get a water skin because you know sometimes people get thirsty. Gotta gotta keep yourself hydrated. Um, rations. Okay, so we're going to just go for the standard rations. They're five gold. We're not going to be adventuring out into, like, the wilderness until probably around level three, around expert level. Um, there's going to be a, uh, the standard, uh, dungeon nearby the starting town, kind of like in, uh, you know, Temple of Elemental Evil, um, you really got to have something close by because any of that overland travel early on, they're, the boys are just going to get wiped. I mean, that's just all there is to it. Um, let's see. How about, uh, okay, our guy, he needs chain mail. Chain mail. 
and a shield and a mace. Oh yeah. Okay. So let's look at all that together. We've got 20, okay, so five, seven, nine, uh, the rope is 10, 11 for the torches, water skin is, uh, okay, 12, 12, 17, okay, so 17, and then the chain mail is 40, so that's 37, and then another 10 gold for the shield on top, let's actually look at, let's turn the page for that, 37, okay, yeah, okay, so we've got the the mace for five gold. Okay, that's not so bad. And we've got chain mail for 40 and a shield for 10. So that seems solid to me, right? Yeah, not bad at all. Okay, so let's see. Let's add it all up one more time just to make sure I've got all the numbers right. Yeah, this is this is high octane content right here, guys. 76. Ooh, 76 gold. Not bad, not bad. Leaving us with a um, ooh, with a nice 34 left. Okay. Well, that's not so bad actually. I think having that extra coinage is going to come in handy. So, with chain mail and a shield. No dex bonus to to add. That's going to put us at 15 AC. Not the best, not the worst. Five hit points. Now, here's what I'm thinking with this guy. He is not going to be a frontliner. I'm going to have him actually in the back, kind of offering support once he gets spells. For now, We'll see how, how it plays out. He might take the front next to the fighter, and I'll have the elf in the back shooting his bow or maybe casting spells. Um, but we'll see. We'll decide that on the next uh, the next episode. Um, we are using the encumbrance. We're going to use just basic encumbrance. No big deal. So essentially what that means is he's going to be able to carry no matter what 1,600 coin of treasure. We're not going to be counting any of his gear against him. We're just going to use the treasure to determine his uh, his maximum capacity. But since he's wearing this heavy armor, his movement is just 20. That's four squares, but we're going to be doing theater of the mind probably. It's a little easier with the camera. All right. So everything except for the name is done on this guy. So we're going to move on to the next homeboy. the elf we're going to do the same process as before we're going to put down his strength his massive intelligence of 17 so impressive he's got a 12 wisdom which i'm going to reduce we're going to reduce that and increase one of his prime requisites to 14 just because we can okay so let's go ahead and do that right now we're going to make this 12 a 10 and bump up our boy okay so here we go we got a 10 and this is going to become a 14. Now, it's not going to change the modifier, but we're one step closer later during training to get to 16. Um, okay, the dex on this guy, he doesn't get any bonus. So that's kind of makes him, me sad to have him as a, as a ranger in the back. But, you know, we're going to do what we can. Now, a 5 con, eesh, that is not great. Pretty sure that's a minus 2. Let's, let's just check. Oof, 5 constitution minus two oof so this guy is a d6 character right d6 hit die minus two straight out the gate now i do get a minimum of one but i'm never going to be higher than four at level one that is not great Whew. he should definitely be in the back line he's not going to survive long and one thing we can note about our dear friend the elf oh wrong way is that the XP ratios here? Oh my gosh, they are not great for an elf. Level two, 4,000. Okay, this guy is a long way away from level two, and he is not looking pretty with a minus two constitution. His saving throws are nothing special 12, 13, 13, 15, and 15. So 
he has to roll just as high as his human compatriots. But if we look here, we can see that an elf with at least a 13 intel and, a, uh, and strength gets 5% bonus. And then if he has a 16 in his intelligence and a, five, uh, a 13 in his strength, he gets 10% bonus to XP. So this guy's sitting pretty with a 10% bonus. We're going to get there. It, it's, it's a grind. We're going to get there. Now, oof, elf alignment. Classically, they're kind of chaotic. Like, that's just kind of like, they live out in the woods. They're antisocial. Ooh, do I want to be a lawful elf? Man, my boys are usually lawful. Mm. Well, let's play his alignment as his class. And let's be chaotic. Let's, let's say he loves the trees more than he loves society. He hates those damn cities and all their bright lights. Okay. We've got a plus one modifier here. And with the strength of 14, I'm pretty sure it's maybe a three and six chance. Let's see, 14, three and six chance to knock open those stuck doors. He's, he is at 50% success rate. He is doing okay. Intelligence. Now, he's going to get a bunch of extra languages with 17. He, he knows two additional languages. We'll come back to that later. We will come back to that boy, bad boy later. That is awesome to see. Uh, plus zero here. Plus zero here. We don't have any fast boys in this group. Minus two on the con. Ouch. And then with charisma of 13, we've seen that. Wait, yeah, 13. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Hey, it's a plus one of his reactions. Five and eight. Okay. He can have five retainers at one time. And their loyalty is sitting at eight. Not bad. That's a lot of extra boys to bring along. Okay. We need to get some gear on this boy. We need to get some HP. Ugh, I say we get the, uh, the rough stuff out of the way right now. Let's roll this man's hit points. He is green like the trees. He is chaotic. Four minus two. This bro has two flippin' hit points. He will not survive a, a blow, okay? We have to keep this guy in the back, peppering the enemy with arrows, okay? Now, let's take a look over here at, at their, their combat issues. They can wear shields, they can wear armor, they can use any weapons. These guys are awesome. Elves are amazing, okay? They can do lots of different things. They can swing with swords up in the front. They can cast spells. They can shoot bows in the back. And the higher their armor, it doesn't affect their sneakiness in any way. In this system, every class, except for a few exceptions, are all surprised on two out of six. So, they move all they all move the same stealthy way. So you want to get your AC as high as you can. So that means we're rolling gold. We're rolling bones and we're going to get a high number here, okay? Pretty average. 100 gold pieces. Okay. 100 gold pieces for our boy. Now if you notice I haven't named my guys yet, okay? I'm going to leave that up to you. If you guys want, you can Drop a name in the comments. That would be awesome. If you had any idea, what should we name our, our holy warrior, our, our elf boy, our pointy-eared friend, and then our human fighter, who we're going to do next. Uh, if not, I'll have them named when we come back for the next episode, when we delve into the dungeon. Um, okay, so let's see. We can get some standard gear for this boy. Okay, we're going to do the same kit as before. We're going to get some torches, some rations, backpack, a large sack, water skin, some smaller sacks. I think we're instead of a rope though, we're going to get a 10-foot pole. And I think instead of like the mace, we're just going to go with a bow and arrow. So let's check the price for the bow and the arrow real quick just so I got this number right. Let's see a short bow 25 long bow's 40, but we're not going to need the range because at this point, we're going to be in the dungeon at level one. That's what we're trying to do. So that's 25 gold right there. 
So, okay, not bad. Let's see. Uh, okay. Let's get uh, some arrows for five. Oh, yeah, gonna have it. But we're not gonna have the shield. We are gonna get the chain mail, though. Okay. So, let's see. Ooh, yeah. Okay, so let's add that all up. We've got 40 for the chain mail, 5 for the arrows. That's 45. Then we've got 25 for the bow. Oof, we're already sitting at 70 gold. Oof, and then the standard gear put us at 91. Ooh, that means he's got 9 gold left over. I'll add in all the, uh, the details for, like, the rations and the torches later. This guy does not have a lot of extra coinage. It's okay, though. Because they're going to pool their resources. These guys are working together. We have the 34 left over from the cleric. We have nine left over here. We're going to be able to hire some boys if we can just get enough to be able to advertise ourselves in town. Because there is a startup cost for getting retainers. You have to, you have to like do some marketing for yourselves, and it costs gold. So let's hopefully, hopefully we can get there. If not. We're rolling three deep into the dungeon, boys. Okay, uh, let's take a look here. Make sure everything's filled in that we need. Uh, we can do title later. Oh, right. Let's write down the AC here. So our boy, he's rocking chainmail, but no shield. He has no dex modifier, so he's rocking 14 AC. But he's not going to be in the front. He's going to be hiding in the back. That does give him a bonus to his AC. He can hide behind the, the tough boys. All right, his movement is 20. His attack bonus, sadly, is plus zero for his level, but his melee to hit is a plus one because of his strength. And it's plus one to his damage as well. He likes that. But I don't ever want to get close enough to swing. So we're going to look plus zero here for our range to hit. Okay, not the best elf ever, but watch. Watch this guy become a champion. Watch him rise in the ranks of power in our new town. Next up, the fighter. The standard human fighter. Now, we have got some solid stats for our fighter. Let's take a look. We had a 16 strength. So right out the gate, we get the 10% XP bonus. We have a 10% XP bonus. We have a plus two to attack. Now, our intelligence is 10. We cannot reduce it by two and keep it above nine. So that one's stuck. Wisdom, six. Ouch. This guy is so, so unwise that he has a negative, I think it's negative one on all sa uh, saving throws against spells or against magic. Let's see. With a six, minus one, ouch, ouch. That's okay, that's okay. Dex is 10, so no bonus to his AC. He's not going fast. His con is a nine. Again, that's a plus zero, so no bonus there. But a fighter, he rolls a D8 on the hit points, man. This guy is happy to be here. A 12 charisma is a plus zero to his... NPC interactions, but he can have four dudes backing him up at seven loyalty. This guy is a leader of men, just not as much as the other two charmers in the group. We have a plus two to, sh to his attack rolls and his damage. This guy is a smasher, okay? He knows the basic language and he can read and write, but nothing else. Okay. It's time for it's time to see the action okay rolling hit points for a fighter in old school essentials this is what we came to see ladies and gentlemen a d8 the the fattest stack right here we're gonna pull that eight okay i can feel the energy can you feel it here we go come on guys all right I'm happy with a five. Okay, five is all right. Again, though, we're facing this, this predicament where we're not guaranteed to survive one hit with five. If they roll a five or a six on their D6, that's it. Game over. Game over. Whew, that's tough. But 
we need some gold. This guy, wouldn't it be wonderful if we just had all the gold in the world? 3d6 times 10. We're rolling high. Not high enough. That is only 80 gold. That is not great. Okay. I am sad to see it. You got to do what you got to do, though. We're going to make do with what we've got. We're going to buy the standard, standard gear for 21 gold. Then on top of that, another 10 for a shield. Another 40 for the armor because we're gonna go chain mail. Let's see, can we afford that? Let's see, 40 for the armor, yeah, that puts us at half, then another 21, ooh, it's another 31, ooh. Guys, we can just afford it. Just afford the chain mail for 40. The shield, where's my eraser? Oh, here. The shield for another 10, that puts us at 30. Oh, man. And then, you know what? You know what we really need? It's a sword. A beast mode sword. That puts us at 20. So how about this? We'll cut out We'll cut out the pole and the rope this time. We'll get the, the food and the sacks, the water skin. And we'll have the sword. That'll do it. That'll do it. Plus zero on the attack mod for just being level one. He's got the strength of plus two. Now, these guys are going into the dungeon next session, okay? You have to pray for them. I had to spend every penny of his gold to get a sword and a shield. He doesn't have a dex modifier to add to his AC. He is a sad, sad man. 15. There it is. All right. Check us out next time as we delve in for the first time. I know we had to do some bookkeeping. That's what you got to do for this game, a little bit of bookkeeping. And we rolled up three characters. We have no extra gold on this guy. We have some on the other two. So maybe we can get some higher links. We'll see how that works out. I think we're going to be a little bit short, to be honest with you. So we're going to just delve, hopefully get some gold, and come back and, and make out with some cash. All right, guys. Check us out next time. Thank you for watching. All right. Bye-bye.